So this is how you roll out a coil. I start with kind of a bigger coil and then gently I push down and roll my fingers out. And it's actually not the pressure that makes it wider, it's actually the rolling. It's kind of centrifugal force and it's directed outwards. So if you're trying to do this and it starts like not staying round but flip-flopping like... Actually it's working for me. <laughs> See right there, it's kind of thin here and thick here. Um, that's because I was pushing too hard. So I just need to come back in, go on the high side and just gently push down as I roll out. Your coils don't have to be perfect but if they're close to good then you won't have as much trouble trying to make things work. So that's my coil and then I'm just going to start building it onto him. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the coil on top and I'm drawing my fingers down on both the inside and the outside. So I'm just holding it with holding the bottom with my right hand and I'm squeezing the clay down with my left. You could also do it the other way. I'm ambidextrous. Do what feels right to you. Ambidextrous means you can use both hands, by the way. Funnily enough, ceramics kind of makes you ambidextrous. So Someday you might have a new skill. So you're just going to push down. As you push down, you're rotating. The clay should be pretty easy to squish in your fingers, the coils that you're adding. If it's too hard and it starts crumbling, see how this is crumbling on the surface? Um, it just means that I need to add water into my clay. And so to do that, with a small piece of clay like this, what I can do is wet my hand and then I can just kind of squish the clay into my hand, break it apart, and I'll squish the two halves together. And I'll just kind of do that again and again until the clay starts to feel pretty good. The only thing with this is you'll need to wedge it a little before you use it again. And because my little guy is now getting dry on his body, I'm going to use a damp sponge, not wet, damp, to dampen him. And I'm going to take out a little bit of this texture because I'm not interested in it. You can leave it if you want. Plenty of people do. And if you want to leave a coil texture on the surface, like just the coil, then you only need to um, meld together the inside, don't worry about the outside, and then you'll have a nice coil texture. If you notice you're getting too thin, then don't squeeze as much on the clay. And if you're getting too thick, then what you can do is once you put the row down, then you kind of just squeeze it a little bit thinner with your fingers. You can also kind of carve the clay out, keeping it 90 degrees to the wall and just kind of pulling it out that way. And if you want to make this smaller, I always put the coil on the inside of the wall as I go around. So I kind of squeeze uh, on the inside corner rather than on the top of the wall that I'm working on. And I keep my hand on the outside to make sure it doesn't like flare out anymore. And right now that opening is too small, so I have to kind of go to a smaller size of these, which is too big. Um, if you have that problem, then you have to cut out a lid of a plastic container and make your own tool. And you can go in there and smooth out the inside. This is also compressing the clay and it's also making it stronger. 
especially if I have my hand on the outside as I do it. Some people pinch too much. I'm very gently pinching. Um, if you can see my hand, I'm pinching just a little bit. I'm not like pinching a lot. I'm just kind of like squeezing. So I'm going to enclose this, which means I'm closing it all the way off. So that'll be the way to do that. And I just put my hand on the inside and I compress the clay upward. And that also will even the wall out because sometimes when you hand build this way, your wall thicknesses get really weird and this will help even that out a little. If you have cracks that continually form when you do this, then you're going to have to put a coil reinforcement in it. So right here, there's a crack. So what I'm going to do, this is where it joined because my bottom piece was starting to dry. I'm going to have to do the scoring and then take, because it's drying, I'm going to have to take slip, put it into that and then take a small coil of clay and squeeze it in. And that'll repair cracks right now. You'll have to make paper clay if it starts to dry and there's cracks. And you'll do it the same way. Except when you see a crack and it's dry, which you have to do, let's just pretend this is a dried piece and this is the crack. You'll have to make a hole all the way through on both ends of it. Then you score it just like we did. Then you make your paper clay coil and you squeeze it in with vinegar. So you'd paint vinegar and then you'd squeeze that in. And that's how you would fix it on dry material. Unfortunately, I don't have anything dry that I want to crack for you right now. So you'll just have to go with me showing you with a wet piece. So if you want to enclose a coiled piece, the way to do it is you can also push down on the top if it's kind of coned out. You can push it in and the clay will kind of collapse on itself down. And then if it gets too small for your fingers, you'll have to use other means like tools to get some pressure in there so you can squeeze down and get your compression. Then, we're just going to make what I like to call a mushroom cap. So, I'm going to take a piece of clay. I just made my hands wet so I can add the water to the clay. Just damp. You don't want them soaking wet. Just damp hands. Dip it in. Dip your hand in. Get some water on the clay and just work it. So, I call it a mushroom cap because I'm making kind of like a little mushroom here, as you can see. And then I push it inside and then I kind of squeeze the clay over. And that's how you enclose it.